Right guys, what is up and welcome back to what is hopefully going to be the second part in the Volvo 340 engine swap. If you saw the last one, it was basically all just preparation, um, engine coming out, uh, which has been achieved. As you can see, just over there, it is all out. And in this video, hopefully we should start seeing the first stages of the new engine going in. Right now, physically today, I'm literally just going to be cleaning the engine bay up uh, while it's all out, make it nice and easy for myself because I don't know when I'll have the chance to work on it as open as that again. Uh, I'm going to also clean the new engine that's going in it, which I will show you guys in a second, and I'm going to remove the power steering pump from the new engine as we won't be needing that because the car doesn't have power steering. Do you know what, first I think I'll show you guys the new engine and then we're gonna get to some cleaning. All right guys, so the engine. Um, here is the V16. You would have seen us take out in the last video and what's replacing it is a B18FT. If you managed to guess that in the comments, well done. Uh, it's from a Volvo 480 Turbo, makes 120 brake. With an ECU remap, it will make 160, which still doesn't sound a lot, but the Volvo is a very light car, and that's still over double what this thing was making. Now, it's not as popular as, say, an F7P or an F7R swap, uh, and it's not as easy as a Renault 5 turbo swap, but with a few 1.7 bits and a little bit of modification, it literally just, just does bolt in. I think the main issue is going to be the wiring, but we'll deal with that when we come to it. But yeah, as I said, I think the main task for today is literally just going to be some cleaning uh, potentially of the engine and the engine bay. And as I said a minute ago, just removing the uh, power steering pump, which we're not going to be needing. So, here's a crack on with that. Right, so I've got some. Uh, the greaser, some rags, and of course, a pressure washer. So let's get started. Right, so that is as clean as I can be bothered to get it. Um, certainly looking better than before. Not half bad. Just gonna let the sun dry it now because you know we're doing an engine swap not a detailing video but um while that dries i'm gonna go do the power steering pump right so uh, it's another day um we've got a load of new parts here at the Garage right through with me. We've got some brand new uh, engine mounts when the new engine gets dropped in, polyurethane. Uh, we've got some bell housing, 17 uh, clutch plate, 17 sump, 17 mountain brackets. I've got my cheap 15 pound intercooler Alex gave me. So thanks for that, Alex, if you're watching. But I think the main task for today is just going to be trying to figure out all of this. Uh, wiring which is spread out over the floor uh, as I said it's been one of the most difficult jobs so uh, also going to give the engine a quick clean probably so I'll show you guys that when I do that but uh, yeah I think we'll uh, crack on with figuring out this wiring as I was saying earlier, uh, we had a look at the wiring loom started making uh, some labels of what we think the plugs are we're leaving that for now uh, and at the moment just Taking off the old sump, gonna chuck the 1.7 on the bottom. Uh, we're gonna do the timing belt, because uh, that hasn't been changed. And we're gonna also replace the water pump, because that's looking, like I said, better days. So yeah, let's uh, get the sump off. Right, so that's the sump out. Um, I guess I'll go uh, grab the 1.7, which I'm just cleaning at the moment, degreasing, and uh, test fit it. I'm not sure if any modifications are gonna need to be made to it. We'll see. 
Right, so here's the uh, new stump, uh, all cleaned and nice now. Uh, literally just gonna go around uh, the bottom still here, clean this all up, uh, put some gasket around here and then bolt it up to the bottom. I think we're gonna get rid of this, which I believe is an oil level sensor because obviously my car has nothing to display that anyway. Uh, and my new sump does not have the hole that this one does and I don't see any point in keeping it so I might just snap that off but yeah let's get this one on the bottom of there Okay, so it is another day. Uh, things have moved along quickly. Uh, I think in the last clip you saw the sump, new sump being bolted on. Well, the car now has a new water pump. Uh, as I said, that was gonna get replaced. Hence, it's got a shorter belt now, which is tensioned up uh, because of the missing power steering pump. The whole timing belt has been done. Uh, all been cleaned up, shiny intake manifold. Um, and now we are just cleaning up the flywheel and pressure plate and I got a brand new 1.7 clutch which hopefully should just bolt on. It has to do some minor modification to this bracket down here so the bell housing fits up flush and bolts up along in these holes but you'll see that when the bell housing is actually on the car what I'm talking about but yeah um, I think the current plan is to get this just bolted in onto the flywheel now and then we can start messing around with the bell housing and it's going to start looking more complete. So uh, pressure plate is bolted on and the clutch plate obviously. Uh, I'm just going to jack the engine up now and have a look uh, at getting the bell housing on. Uh, right, okay, so the bell housing is all now fully connected. Um, definitely going to need to replace the clutch release bearing at some point because it's pretty shot, the one that's in it at the moment. Uh, and it's going to be very noisy, but right now uh, the starter motor has just gone in and we're just going to connect power and hopefully spin the flywheel. So yeah, I don't know if you picked up in the video, but it's definitely turning. Um, the engine mounts, uh, I've started putting on. The front engine mounts, one seven. There's one over there. Uh, and there is another one. Uh, just gonna be bolted up on those three, like so. But yeah, once those are in, we could start thinking about potentially doing well, dropping it into the bay and seeing how it fits. Right, okay, so as you just saw, uh, engine mounts are now on and pretty much we're just gonna fold it in now, do the first test bit. Hopefully it fits all right. Right, so uh, first test bit. Um, I think we're gonna need to take the bell housing off and this uh, little bracket to get it to clear uh, under uh, the car. So that's essentially what we're gonna do right now. Try lowering it in again and then reattach the bell housing when the car's back up in the air. Right guys, so a uh, little update because I didn't actually film any more on that day. Uh, we took the bell housing off and we managed to get the engine to clear, essentially uh, past the subframe under the car. Uh, the next issue we had was 
the turbo was hitting the brake master cylinder. I'll insert a little picture here I took. Yeah, so as you can see in the picture, the brake master cylinder, well, the servo for it is unbolted and it basically is obstructing where the turbo charger is on the engine. So, what we've had to do, uh, and it's not fully complete yet, is flip the exhaust manifold. I've actually got it here with me now. Uh, so, as you see in the picture, uh, here is the exhaust manifold uh, and what we have essentially done is cut it uh, at each port and then flipped the manifold 180 degrees because you can't just flip the whole manifold because it's got these uh, weird shaped joins that need to fit up by the intake manifold. Uh, we've flipped it 180 degrees so that brings the turbo about six inches forwards so it now clears the brake master cylinder hopefully the engine will fit and we can resume with wiring but I'll see you in the next clip on another day right okay so um, the exhaust manifold which I was just talking about in the previous clip has been sent off now and that should all be welded up very soon hopefully uh, engine is now fully sitting with the manifold off obviously in the engine mounts properly located uh, we're just gonna basically secure it, um, tighten everything down, the rear and the front mounts. Might put the prop shaft back in, but yeah, uh, I think that is where I'm going to end this second part. Next video, part three, which will hopefully be the last part, is all just gonna be about sorting out electrics, sorting out fuel, uh, getting that exhaust manifold on, and hopefully, starting it hopefully the engine isn't fucked because i don't even know yet but um yeah see you in that video